All right, so I'm gonna talk about um, patient engagement and RAINS in terms of um, benefits, challenges, and opportunities. Whoops, it is very sensitive. All right, so I, I, up front, I wanna actually acknowledge the patient representatives in the RAINS Patient Report Outcomes Group, which is the group I lead, um, Barbara Franklin, Krista Frederick, and Stephanie Reeve, um, because they have been really helpful in, um, you know, coming up with ideas for this presentation and reviewing my slides, um, as well as other things in the group. So um, they've been really helpful uh, in many different ways. And also Vanessa Merker, who is our patient group uh, liaison, who helps to organize and, um, you know, schedule phone calls and has been helping to train the patient re representatives in our group. So they've been really helpful and instrumental in a lot of the things we've been doing in the past six months. So first of all, we've been talking a lot about patient engagement research, but what do we really mean? Um, so we're talking about the meaningful and active collaboration of patients and caregivers in the entire research process. I mean, RAINS kind of focuses on uh, the outcomes, but just really wanted to talk about um, all the ways that uh, patients can be engaged in research, and we hope to work on these, not only through RAINS, but it's through CTF. Um, there's a number of things from the very beginning, um, setting priorities for research topics, things that maybe um, the patient's things are, are important to study, but we may not have thought about. Uh, selecting meaningful study outcomes, and that's what uh, RAINS is focused on. Reviewing study materials, there's a lot of things that would be helpful to have um, patients and caregivers to look at so we know we're giving out things that are understandable, um, like recruitment flyers, instructions for procedures of the study, especially for home procedures, um, informed consent, consent documents where you learn about the study, um, and also providing input on study design to make it more doable for the patients who are participating and helping to disseminate findings once we get them. Um, that could be in scientific journal articles and helping us write them. It also would be great to have um, them write, um, you know, summaries of research findings for, you know, newsletters for the foundations and things like that. Whoops. So basically it is researchers and the patients and caregivers working together as a team, as partners. So there's a lot of benefits for patient engagement, both for researchers and for patients and caregivers themselves. First of all, I think that it brings uh, up a new and different perspectives from patients that may highlight issues that we haven't previously considered. Identification of new research topics, as, as I mentioned before. More feasible and relevant trial designs that are more applicable and um, able to be done and, and completed by patients in timely manners. Uh, meaningful and study, meaningful and novel study outcomes, as well as improved adherence to procedures. And I think with all of these things, we'll end up having better recruitment and less attrition and people dropping out, and thus the studies will get done in a more timely manner, and the information um, and results and treatments can get out to the community faster. For patients and caregivers, and um, my patient reps helped me come up with some of these um, benefits. Um, one is making research more relevant and feasible for the patients and caregivers themselves. That seems to be a common theme that benefits both re researchers and patients. Um, creating positive outcomes from having a chronic illness like NF. Feeling more empowered and self-confident because of the contributions and the differences that they will be making by participating and helping us with plan the research and forming new relationships and a sense of community. We've really noticed this and it's been really uh, rewarding. There's always challenges to, to new things. Change is hard. And I really like this saying, all change is hard at first, messy in the middle, and so beautiful at the end. And I think this is really true. It's hard to change the way you've been doing something for so long. Um, I think some of the, we're kind of, I think, in the midst of all of that, we're, it is hard because we're doing new things. We're still kind of working things out with some of the working groups and all the things that they can do, so it's still a work in progress, but we're already seeing benefits and seeing the beauty that it and can, um, that we, the ways that we can benefit. So some challenges are being open for the researchers, being open to ideas and contributions from patients and caregivers about research. We're always, you know, it's been years and decades where we think, you know, research has been like, this is what we're gonna do. But, you know, it's really been helpful to come up, to listen to the patients and, and hear their ideas and be open to them and saying, yeah, that's a great idea, we didn't think of that. But it is a new thing and we're, um, we need to be open to this. Um, also, it's developing new types of relationships with patients as equal partners in research. 
we, and this is a big one, I think, for all of us, particularly since this is a volunteer organization with RAINS, it's requires, it does require increased time and effort. Like I had to get the slides done for this two weeks ahead of time. <laughs> Usually I'm doing it the night before, right? So I had time to have a phone call and talk about this with the patient representatives and then make some changes. And also, you know, the challenge is avoiding just token or superficial efforts. We really want their participation to be meaningful. And for challenges for patients um, themselves and caregivers, it's adjustment to a new role. Again, they need to be able to maybe disagree with researchers um, or maybe they're not used to doing that. Um, there's a lot of unfamiliar terminology and procedures. We have a lot of training that's gonna be done, which Andrea Gross is gonna talk about. But again, new things to learn. And as well for the patients as with the researchers, increased time and effort, and particularly juggling this along with competing jobs and family obligations was uh, something that the, the patient representatives uh, mentioned as being difficult. And of course, limited funds to travel and meetings, and we're, I know the patient representative group is working on some different ways of fundraising, but that is a challenge. And it's really a continuum that we have of patient engagement that we're working toward. Um, on one end is very passive engagement where the patient is just a data point in a study. And that's, we think, the old way. And we're moving toward the other continuum where um, patient engagement is active and the patient is, uh, is equal as the researcher. And we're moving along that path. I think we still have a ways to go. And these are different things. These are, this is the process in different um, types of thing to help move along that path uh, to increase patient engagement. Um, first, um, on the left-hand side, is really, it's really one directional where researchers will inform and educate patients. This would be things with, you know, uh, websites and newsletters, and, uh, you know, just information sessions. And then the next is, you know, we're hearing from patients about what matters to them. We're listening and gathering information, and that could be from patient surveys and suggestions. And then it becomes a bit more of a discussion where we get a back and forth, like focus groups are great for that because we can really, um, you know, we hear from them and then we ask questions and there's a back and forth and we can learn a lot from that as well. And then we really want to move toward involving patients and that's what we're doing now with the RAINS working groups. They are actually part of the working groups, part of the ongoing discussions that we have every month and that's really becoming beneficial. And then the last point, which I think we really need to get to, is where there are equal partners. And this way they're part of our leadership teams and actual members of uh, research teams and working on the development of protocols. So ways to increase patient engagement in RAINS, providing education and training is key. And again, Andrea Gross will be talking about that. Integrating patients on all the working groups. I think we've got most of them going, but we still need to work on some of the other ones. Um, have, I think having patient liaisons, Vanessa's done a great job uh, with the working groups because it's a contact person and a person that spent a little bit extra time outside of the general meetings to help train and uh, educate the patients. Um, schedule regular calls at convenient times, and that's tricky. It's hard enough with researchers than with patients who have their own jobs that can't necessarily take time during the day. That's been tricky, but we really try to do our best at least have several of the, um, you know, at least two of the three on the calls that, uh, when we can and working together to generate meaningful opportunities for engagement again we're listening to the patients about how they can help us as well as us saying how um, we're having our ideas so again working together to come up with more and more meaningful um, opportunities and again find, you know listening and being open to the new ideas is really important and respecting everyone's opinion so just, these are some of the current opportunities. I kind of polled the different working groups and I talked to some of the patient representatives and these are some of the things that are currently going on and this is just six months into this whole patient engagement initiative. Um, there are, most of them are participating in monthly working group calls, attending the in-person RAINS meeting. We had our first one in December of 2017. Um, they're involved in developing training plans and educational materials. Um, they've been generating um, uh, and beginning to implement some fundraising suggestions and um, assisting in developing patient surveys. The um, neurocognitive group had one that has, has been out in the registry, and I know the cutaneous neurofibroma group is working on one that has been involving patients uh, to help them with um, the wording and the things that should be asked. 
Um, so some other current opportunities that we've been working on in range with the patient representatives, they've been reviewing new outcome measures, and this has been so helpful. So for our example, for in my group in the patient report outcomes group, we have measures that we're reviewing uh, as possible outcomes. So let's say general quality of life is the, the domain we're working on now. So they'll actually take the patient report outcome. They'll take the questionnaire and they'll let us know, um, oh, well, let, these questions aren't very good or these are confusing um, or it's not really measuring this. Um, and actually, um, Stephanie has a, as a parent with a child with NF and she will give it to her daughter and have her daughter complete it. So we get a lot of good information on whether they're feasible and um, we're, you know, will be good for NF1. So that's been really, really helpful. Um, uh, yeah, share experiences when completing measures. I'm ahead of myself. Um, provide input on protocols. I know, Scott, with um, one of your studies, they've been um, giving you input on feasibility for um, clinic visits for one of your protocols. And again, what they helped with this time was assi assisting with meeting presentations from slide preparations to giving talks. Um, Maureen Hussey is gonna give a talk next about the patient perspective, and that's really helpful. And then finally, um, Assisting, in re assisting with reviewing and writing publications when we have our next supplement will certainly involve the patient representatives in, in that process as well. So in summary, I feel like with RAINS, the patient engagement has been very beneficial for meeting our goals um, to standardize outcomes in NF clinical trials. Um, you know, it is a change, and change is always hard when you do something new to having active patient engagement, and there's some challenges, but, you know, RAINS is, you know, we are just very committed, and we're seeing the benefits already uh, to continue and um, increase patient engagement in what we do. And again, there are many opportunities. These are just the first six months, and I think with the patient's help, we will be able to, um, you know, come up with um, more opportunities for engagement um, that will help us reach our goals. Um, so that's all I have. If there's any questions. Oh, wait, I have one more slide. Sorry, I forgot about that. I added this at the last minute. Um, Scott talked a little bit about this, is how to become involved in RAINS. Um, you know, as Scott said, we're, we're having kind of a cycle we haven't really figured out exactly when to switch that, or and we, maybe we'll have the patients help train the new patient uh, representatives. Um, but in the meanwhile, if you just want to find out more and keep up with what we're doing, um, you can visit the RAINS website. That is the, um, you know, the URL link. Um, you also can just, if you type in, I don't know if it knows the RAINS yet, but if you type in response evaluation and neural fibromatosis, it'll pop up, and it's open to anyone to look. And there's different pages for each of the working groups. There's things about the meetings, the publications, all that information is on the website. Um, and again, as Scott said, attend the open range meetings. And if you Google, if you just type in response evaluation in neurofibromatosis, it should pop up. There's not too many of those. So yeah, so for the next cycle, you know, we will circulate it on the registry and through all the foundations. They were very helpful in giving, you know, disseminating the application the first time. And then if there's specific questions, they can talk to your assistant, right? Rachel Thalheimer, <laughs> just to help put things up on the website. That would be great, yeah. If, um, Scott wondered if there's anybody that was interested in helping me with the website, because it's just, I just you know don't really know what I'm doing. The only problem is it's a government website, Scott. So there's a little trick there that you have to kind of maybe be a government employee to get on there. <laughs> just a little trick, you know. But I'll look into it. Yeah, just a minor thing. But it's this, oh, I know, it's this little thing on the side that I taught myself. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's the easiest way then. Go to ctf.org. You all know where that is, and then you can click on the link. I like that.